Nikki and Kian from Westlife, a pleasure talking to you guys. A uh, new album on the way, Wild Dreams, on the 26th of November. New single, which we'll play very shortly, as always. I find this a bit weird doing things. Normally, you guys come into the studio, we have a chat, but technology. Listen, the last 18 months, how have you just found it? Yeah, yeah, good to talk to you again, Glenn, um, and, and see you, even though it's not in person. But, yeah, it's been it's been weird, hasn't it? You know, I think um, for the whole world, for, for us as a band, for you guys as radio presenters and... For the everyday person, you know, at home, I think um, none of us saw coming. None of us knew what was coming around the corner. When was yeah. it going to end? When was it, you know, what, what, you know, we've kind of been living very much in our day to day moments, haven't we? Um, I think there's been some positives to it, um, you know, from a, from a family perspective, getting to spend a lot of time with your family and being at home with your kids a little bit more. And, you know, uh, homeschooling was certainly a challenge, uh, one that I did not enjoy whatsoever. <laughs> but then at the same time, you know, uh, living down in Sligo and, and being locked down to like say a 5k or even a 2k was great for us in a weird sense because we're on the beach you know we got to walk on the beach every day and me and my young fellas got to surf all the time and um, you know my, my nine-year-old became a very very talented little surfer throughout the process so you know there, there's positivities to it but I think um, you know it's been it's been a challenging time I think for everybody around the world and, and a sad time as well we've got a we've got a kind of you know remember how many people have lost their lives i think uh, for us that that haven't caught covid or that haven't that don't really know too many people that have caught covid you know when you see the figures on the news every day and stuff like that it's a very very daunting situation and um you know you just your heart kind of goes out to everybody who's who's had the, the worst time ever you know and who, who have lost loved ones and um you know, I think sometimes we, we forget about that because at the end of the day, we're seeing those numbers every day, but they're just a number after a while. And yeah. you, you actually forget that that's a life. Um, so I just want to kind of, you know, say that. I think it's important to say that. Indeed. Nikki, over the last 18 months, have you uh, learned anything new? Have you tried any new skills? Have you developed anything? Where do I start? I mean... He's a gardener. I'm a gardener now. Oh, well, right. Okay. I wouldn't say I'm a gardener, but I definitely enjoyed it. Do you I, cut your own grass? Yeah, I have cut my own grass. No, that wasn't the question. Do you cut your own Do grass? You? That's a very broad question. Very <laughs> open question. <laughs> so, um, so, no, uh, the 2K lockdown, I started going, right, well, how do I keep myself busy here? Uh -huh. The weather was good. And then I thought, right, I'm going to start getting this. The, these shrubs need cut and that needs, don't like that area. I'm going to, so I started going into the shops and buying like, you know, outside like your, your local supermarket, there'd be like plants outside and it'd be a lot yeah. of them. So I bought my mulch bark and I did a bit of Googling, got my gloves, got my little um, forks and spades. And uh, I used to, what I used to do is I'd get the, my phone, <clears throat> excuse me, and I put the radio on speaker. Um, obviously, you know, I'd be listening to downtown and then uh, and I'd be digging away and putting it because it was summertime, I was putting a bit of water on the, on the, on the uh, soil. And I started to become a gardener. Anyway, skip ahead. I then started judging the plants, Glenn. I started going out to the shop going, no, I'm not going to buy that one. That looks a little bit too withered. You know, that, that, <laughs> that's not the right color. Um, and then but without dropping names, because we started recording an album, I was on email with Ed Sheeran and I was telling him, he was asking me, how was I coping? I said, I'm getting into gardening. And he was telling me what he was getting into and different things that we were all doing. And I said, I'm also trying to learn how to play the guitar. Uh, so was my, one of my sons. And he sent me one of his guitars, uh, oh, uh, his brand of guitar. He has his own uh, brand of guitars, which I believe are, are made in Belfast, actually. They are indeed. We talked about this a few weeks ago on the show. They are, yeah. Yeah, and he sent me one down from his son, Jay. And we started playing it on, on, uh, on, online, as in, sorry, on the, the internet, you know, uh, guitars yeah. for dummies. And started to learn. I mean, we started playing. I got a feeling, and um, it's quite the chords and that are quite. I won't say easy, but you picked them up quickly. And we were really, really into it for like a week, and then we just never went back to it. And I'm afraid to tell Ed Sheeran that. I mean, if there's ever, <laughs> if there's ever somebody in the world that sends you a guitar that you want to impress, go, yeah, mate, look, I'm, I'm flying. Yeah. Uh, and I still have to go back to him and say, Ed, listen, that's not, that's not going too well. But uh, maybe on the next lockdown in 50 years time <laughs> any of the uh, the children any of the kids following in your footsteps at all i've got definitely of three kids two of them are well into music no you're right nicky you definitely do have three kids <laughs> <laughs> uh, two of them are really into music really into singing um and then one of them both the two lads are really into sport and and they play gaelic and they play soccer and and different things uh but one of them wouldn't care too much about 
uh, Westlife or that world, but yeah. certainly he's, in, he's into his different style of music. Like, you know, um, it's funny now though, Glenn, you'll know this from being on radio. The, the new songs come out, like that, that KSI song that was out, what, two months ago, three months ago. And I, I didn't even know who KSI was, barred that he, he was in like some fight with uh, Jake Paul, who yeah. I also didn't know who he was yeah. until I watched that fight. And then he's since fought, you know, and, and kind of now might be fighting one of the Furies or whatever. <laughs> but um, well, yeah, that KSI song was really good. Like, yeah. I was going, this is a YouTuber. He's also a semi-pro boxer and he's releasing really good records. And I think that really, it did. you correct me, I think it did quite well actually that well, it did quite well as you say off the back of a boxing match and youtubing and you know yeah. you, you mentioned working in radio and it seems now kids i mean i've got a my, my young lad daily is he's 12 years old and i'm thinking i wonder is he going to follow in the footsteps no i'm going to be a youtuber i'm you know i'm going to, that, that's the answers you get i'm going to be a youtuber so i can understand yeah. so what about your own it's kids Kim, any? we're so out of the loop uh, when it comes to like what's cool and what's i never even heard of that uh, so, you were always out of loop. Never heard of that goals. song. Never heard of that. Kid. <laughs> I've heard of Jake Paul, but that's about the only thing you mentioned there a minute ago that I've heard of. But um, yeah, and like that, you know, I think I think our kids are the ones that are educating us nowadays as to what's what's what and what's good and what's bad. And um, my young fellas have gotten really bad mad into Billie Eilish. Uh, they love Billie Eilish for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. Uh, my nine-year-old is a lovely little singer. He's... Do you know Billie Eilish's parents are are Irish? Are they? Yeah. yeah. Did you know that, Glenn? Yeah. He and thinks Billie Eilish is a fella. <laughs> No, I do not. <laughs> when I first different. heard the name, I did. But then I heard the songs, and I went, well, that's a female voice. And then I saw the pictures. <laughs> you know, uh, during lockdown as well, I know we all, it went, it exploded. And I've, my little daughter has about uh, hundreds of videos of us two doing TikTok dances. Yeah, and I've yeah. never seen the light of day. I might have let her put one of them up. But like, so me trying to learn, I'm going, and what you do then? Yeah, I'm going to go over here. And it's just, <laughs> we had the best fun and the best crack ever. Uh, but it's a whole new world. A whole it is a whole new world. Okay, guys, the album. Um, this album was a wee bit different in the recording because I'm reading like there was um, a home music rig sent around for you guys to record vocals and stuff. So was that a bit strange? It was. It was a bit weird. Um, you know, we had this massive rig that we had to set up ourselves. Uh, two laptop computers, this massive microphone stand with like this big weird box that went around our heads to keep the sound in and stop the sound going out and, you know, stop reverb and bouncing and all of that type of stuff. But, um, you know, it was an interesting process for sure. Um, you know, recording in your, in your house and, you know, doing stuff with the kids there and the dog barking and the delivery man coming, yeah. you know, cause the wife is doing nothing but spending your money online on sh online <laughs> shopping. We all have that experience. Um, you know, you just get all, all of those things kind of like you kind of, you know, it was definitely a challenge, but it was an interesting challenge. And I think um, one we'll never forget. And I think when it comes to this record, um, you know, it, it definitely it definitely kind of helped the record in a weird way, because um, I think we, we cared a lot more about it. And we kind of, you know, it was a lot more passion from from the four of us as individuals rather than, you know, the process before might have been very producer led, whereas this album was very much led by by the members of the band. And, uh, you know, I think just overall, we're very proud of the record. There's some great songs on there and there's some great uplifting songs on there. We wanted this, this record to be very much about like, kind of like getting up and getting back to living life again. And, and, and um, you know, I think a song that really touches on that is a song that Nicky wrote called Alive, which is, you know, some of the lyrics are the world will dance again. And, you know, I think that whole kind of sentiment is very, very, very much about what this record is that, you know, it's time now, you know, we've all been sat in our arses for the last, two years it's time to get up and get moving again and um this this record definitely feels like it has that vibe to it i mean I Glenn, that was a great that was a great answer i just can't wait for jody Kane's wife to hear the bit where he said spending spending his money i think <laughs> oh did i say that you're in so much trouble <laughs> you're such a neanderthal <laughs> yeah. now guys yeah. tell me this it's because my money <laughs> yeah I've, uh, as you know, I followed you guys from uh, for many years, and I, and I know towards the you know the last sort of couple of albums, you've always wanted to have your own input and do your own thinking. You touched on it there. It's maybe something you didn't get to do in the early days. Nikki, how important is that to you now to be doing what you want to do? Well, you know, it's the, it's 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 the next part of our story. You know, it's um, you know, we started off as a young pop band that when the label said jump, it was how high do you need us to jump? Yeah. We, you know, we and, and and rightly so. And luckily, we gave up all our days off. We said we don't want it. We don't want any days off for 18, 17, 18, 19. Just throw us around the planet. Put us wherever you want. We'll do the work. And we did. And we enjoyed every bit of it. And and it paid off. 
And, you know, you can't live like that forever. You know, you can't, it, it's never, people grow up. So the fans, well, it still kind of exists in Belfast, actually, where people are banging on the on the cars and as, as you're leaving yeah. the arena, which is amazing. But but that that kind of chaoticness of a boy band starting off, which we we had for years, does generally, generally die off as you get obviously older if you yeah. manage to stay around. We're in our 40s now. And um, the next part of our story is, particularly with the pandemic was to to be creative ourselves more than 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 we have been yeah. not that we haven't been mark has always been creative mark has always written songs we've all dipped in and dipped out of it over the years but with the challenges that the world faced the only way we could do this album was to do it from home was to hook up with friends online producers around the world different bands i mean that song alive i wrote with picture this and um, the irish band picture this and yeah it just came together quite nicely um and you know, I hope we never have to do the the remote recording again, but yeah. certainly the creative process of writing and certainly was really, really enjoyable. And the more you do of anything, the better you'll get. And we've definitely delivered some great songs in this album. No, good to hear. Uh, the album itself, Wild Dreams, is available from the 26th of November. You can pre-order now at westlife.com. We'll play the first single from that, which is uh, Starlight. But there's also, I believe, a few recorded live tracks on there, some of the classics. On the album, one of them. Yeah, we actually we did a we did a um, a live event in Belfast there a few weeks ago, and um, you know it was kind of like a broken down version of of seven or eight songs at, at the gig, and it was a very very it was their first thing to do back as a band, and uh, you know there was only a hundred people. It was in the Ulster Hall, and after the gig, we kind of we were listening back to the songs, and we were like, this is really good, you know, we don't want this to just live, if you like, in that one show, and we thought. Well, why don't we put like two or three of these versions onto the new record on the deluxe version of the album? So um, we've done that. And, uh, you know, just to kind of give the fans a taste of of the old as well as the new um, in a different light. So, um, yeah, there's a deluxe version with a few of the a few of the old classics on there as well. OK, uh, talking about Belfast, you're back on the road next year. Sold out Wembley. Hey, hey. That's right. Yeah, well, that's would you believe, Ben? That's that was supposed to be part of the tour two years ago. Yeah, uh, that got cancelled. But we held on to Wembley Stadium because I mean, and we, we announced at the time as like, you know, for one night only, you know, Wembley Stadium, if not the most iconic, one of the most iconic stadiums on the planet. And we managed to sell it out and we fought tooth and nail with everyone to keep that, you know, dates have changed because of, of, of the pandemic. But we've held on to it rather than cancelling it and, and trying to, you know, put it back on in time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're a different band nowadays than we were when we were, let's say, the, the early night, uh, early zero zeros when we probably could have done Wembley Stadium, but pop bands didn't really do it then. I think yeah. Spice Girls might have done it, but I think take that changed a lot when they came back uh, on their reunion and they did Wembley Stadium, and then you saw the likes of One D later on. Yeah. We, we would have done Five Nights in Earl's Court back in the day, which would have been Wembley and yeah. and or. Uh, so, but we didn't do it. So it was always in our minds going, that that would be some special night. And, and equally, the way we've managed to do, you know, a lot of quote parks in our own country uh, down the years. But but certainly to be over in London, in Wembley was, was was huge, you know. So that sold out and pretty much there might be, you know, scatter of tickets left, but not much at all, if, if any. Uh, and that's a big gig. If anyone ever wants to travel over from, from Northern Ireland, that's going to be a whopper gig next August. Uh, and we will announce gigs for, for everywhere, for Europe, for the UK, for Ireland. Uh, for Asia, China, uh, in in good time. Definitely in the coming weeks, you'll know more on on Belfast. And um, um, will uh, here will the uh, will the tour include an old classic Westlife type medley of other people's songs, which you do well. well I mean, the medley has become kind of iconic yeah. and, and 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 significant for us. Now, I got it? a feeling. Yes, yeah, <laughs> good one. And I, even as far back as when we changed the lyrics to "Don't you wish your boyfriend was yeah." Bad? Like, you love you know, Nikki. Uh, I gotta say, you love singing that on stage. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, yeah, but last year, um, because we've been away for eight years, the medley last year I thought was really good. Well, sorry, I say last year, two years ago now, uh, longer when we did that Queen um, yeah. medley on the on the reunion tour. Uh, we, we all channel, channeled our inner Freddie, and we went for it. And it's always tongue in cheek, everything we yeah. do when it comes to the medley. But it's a great night out. People are coming to the shows now who are. You know, grew up as teenagers, as fans. Now they're married. They're bringing their mothers, their their their, their kids, their husbands, whatever, their wives, whatever it might be, and they're and they're just having a great night out. And and that's what this. That's I think that's the we are now. Would you believe, Glenn? I know you don't believe this, but we are now considered a heritage act. 
uh, which hurts. But um, <laughs> it, does it does hurt a little. But uh, but what's great about a Heritage Act is you don't lose your old fans, and everybody yeah. enjoys that big night out to to you know that bit of nostalgia. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely deliver on that. Okay, well, listen, guys, absolute pleasure talking to you as always. Again, the album, uh, Wild Dreams, 26th of November, westlife.com is where you can pre-order that. And uh, listen, good luck with the album. Good luck with the new single. We're going to play that now, Starlight. And uh, I'll catch you, if not, in a venue in Belfast, in a bar sometime in Belfast soon. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Good to see you, man.